Duke Bardorba has been murdered. The hero who single-handedly ended the Valendian Civil War, now a powerful political figure, was killed by one Ashley Riot. The accused is a member of the Risk Breakers, an elite task force meant to terminate any threats to the security of the realm. But why would an elite warrior who's meant to protect Valendia murder its savior in cold blood? And how does this case involve the cult Mullenkamp and its mysterious leader, Sidney Lost Harrow? In Vagrant Story, the player experiences the events of the week prior to the Duke's murder and find out the truth about the crime and the mysterious city of Lamondi. Vagrant Story is a PS1 game from Squaresoft released in the year 2000, currently available for digital purchase on the PlayStation 3 store. Directed by Yasumi Matsuno, the bulk of the game occurs one week prior to the murder of Duke Bardorba and takes place mostly in the destroyed city of Lamondi where monsters reside and the cult Mullenkamp is hatching a sinister plot. This action role-playing game also features puzzle and platforming mechanics in order to spice up the gameplay, however most of the game is centered around combat. It should be noted though that story is also a focus of this game, and the twisting narrative is supplemented by a whole host of wonderfully shot cutscenes and exquisite character models. Vagrant Story's graphics are astounding, and the game knows it. This game came out almost three years after Final Fantasy VII, which makes its graphical improvements even more amazing to me. Sure, technology's been improving at a rapid pace for a long time now, but it still shocks and inspires me at how much Square was able to improve in such a short time. The majority of the cutscenes are done completely in-engine, unafraid to focus on the characters and really zoom into their faces, which look phenomenal. The camera work of the scenes is also transportative, making me forget momentarily that I'm playing a game and completely engrossing me in the story itself. However, although the camera work in the cutscenes is absolutely phenomenal, the camera during gameplay can be a bit hard to work with, depending on enemy placement and location. It's a very minute complaint as the gameplay camera functions well and doesn't detract from the experience at all. This is one of the few games I can think of where the in-game graphics accurately conveys the original art style of the character design. Looking up the character art for this review has been such a treat because it truly feels like they tried to pack as much of the design into the in-game character models as possible. Not only is their identical nature breathtaking, but their designs are as well. Normally, fantasy games and fantasy art are criticized for their abundant fan service when it comes to female character designs. However, Akihiko Yoshida takes a bold but very rewarding chance with the character designs in this game. He makes the dude's designs so hot. Like, I'm a cishet male, but there is no denying these dudes are meant to be and are sexy. Sydney Lost Tarot's V to the Valley is very alluring and almost as mysteriously entrancing as the character himself. And the player character, Ashley Riot, <clears throat> Maybe I should call him Astley Riot. This man sultrily strutted through Square Headquarters so that 2B could sprint when her time came. <laughs> As for the gameplay, the different combat and puzzle platforming modes add different layers of enjoyment to the game. The combat plays similarly to Parasite Eve in the sense that the player character can move about freely during combat, only pausing in order to take an action. The fights are even more intense, however, because unlike Parasite Eve, Vagrant Story's combat doesn't include an ATB bar. This results in the battles being a lot faster and feeling a lot more intense, especially because the combat system actually emphasizes input timing to either mitigate or exacerbate damage and remove or add status effects. It's like, imagine you're playing a combat-heavy RPG, but then a rhythm game pops up for like a few seconds and that determines whether or not you get poisoned or take half damage. It sounds weird in concept, but in execution it's both engaging and exhilarating, helping to make the game's combat stand out in my personal experience. Vagrant Story's combat also includes the ability to target individual limbs and body parts, each with their own hit chance, kind of like Vats in Fallout 3. Different enemies have different resistances to elements and weapon types that affect these hit chances and the amount of damage that can be done to them. These options give players more factors to consider which allows for a variety of strategies to be implemented during battles if needed, and helps vary the encounters as well, encouraging the players to keep a decent variety of gear on hand in order to overcome their obstacles. The other half of gameplay includes an emphasis on puzzle solving and platforming, but I feel like I had to solve more box puzzles than I had to platform. Hell, there were so many of these puzzles I felt like I was playing through the box ghost's darkest and dankest wet dreams. Admittedly, they aren't particularly difficult, but I am pretty dumb, 
so they took me a bit longer than they should have. I've probably captured a few hours of gameplay of me just moving boxes around before exiting a room or jumping off a ledge in order to reset them. The platforming itself is also not inherently challenging, but because of how stiff the jumping and movement controls can be, some platform sections took a few tries for myself, but none of it compared to the amount of time I sank reorganizing squares to reach the next room over. A bit of a point against the game though involves the dungeon designs. Aesthetically, there's nothing wrong with them, but they repeat rather often. However, I do think these repeated designs are used very effectively. I streamed myself playing this game to friends on Discord a few times, and one friend was present for both Undercity West and East, but missed everything in between. Once he saw where I was, he exclaimed, Damn man, you're still in this dungeon? Now, although it does disappoint me a bit that there are very uniform designs, I feel that it makes logical sense. Because the bulk of the game takes place in Leomonde, the similar design really sells the idea that you are in one city, and Matsuno very cleverly uses this to explore different parts of the city at different times in order to vary the player experience. So instead of exploring the entirety of both Undercity West and East's big blue glory as a single dungeon, Matsuno has the player use the western half of Undercity as a means to reach the northern city walls, which has a different design, before coming back to the eastern half of the Undercity later in the game. Doing so helps break up the monotony of mostly unchanging environments, but I still would have liked a few more different area designs. As for the story, I want to avoid as many spoilers as possible, because this narrative is filled to the brim with mystery, political intrigue, philosophical implications, and absolutely riveting dialogue. The way the story unfolds is mesmerizing, and it's an absolute treat to experience. The story's final twists and turns are unexpected, but welcome and help contribute to making this already amazing game the classic and must-play experience that it's known for being. I highly recommend that you give this game a try, especially if you enjoy any of Matsuno's other works, or are curious as to why this game often receives the praise that it does. The city of Leomonde and all of its glorious dark mysteries awaits.